Crying, crying. So first and foremost, all honor and glory to the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. We the Hebrew Israelites. Come out here week in and week out to try to wake up the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Seminole Indians. To let you know that you God's chosen people, man. And it's high time to wake up to sleep. So, uh, let me start off with the book of, uh, let me get the book of, uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, Baba Kishore. Matthew 24 and 14. Let's go with this man. Lord willing, we can re Lord willing, we can read some souls today. Do you believe in the Bible? Yeah. Right, but the Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. You got it? You got it. The Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Right, so it says this gospel shall be preached until all, before all the world and, and all the nations, and then shall the end come, man. And you know that's what that's that's the main purpose of brothers coming out here on these highways and byways, you know, to get this gospel to uh to uh, be spread all abroad, man. You know, to get this gospel to basically be preached throughout all the nations, man. You know, so so we try to put our brick in and do our part, you know, to try to get the uh, gospel pushed forward, you know, more than what it was, you know. And brothers is waking up every day, you know, brothers and sisters, you know. And we doing we doing our thing to kind of you know get this uh to get this gospel to spread. You know, and what is the gospel? You know, the gospel is let me guys there since we one one. So we gotta know what the gospel is. You know, Christians you act up what the gospel is. They gonna say the book of Matthew, the book of Luke, the book of Mark, and the book of John. That's the gospel. But hold on, it's, it get deeper than that. You know, because what did they come to preach? Sister, you believe in the Bible? Of Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. Right, so the meaning of the gospel is good tidings, man. You know, Isaiah, he, break, he basically going to break down what the gospel is. He said, The Spirit of God is upon him because the Lord anointed him to preach good tidings to the meek, man. You know, keep going on that. And he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives. Right, so it says to proclaim liberty to the captives, man. Hey, if you ain't know, man, you black man, Hispanic man, Native American man, you are a captive in this nation, man. Right. You are not free like how you think you are, you know. Just because you got just because you got the liberty to go out and buy whatever you want, to uh, eat where to eat wherever you want and all of that, that doesn't mean you free, man. You know, let me get the Baruch, let me get the book of Baruch, chapter um what is that? Is that two and thirty? So like it might be it might be four and uh four and eight. Yeah, you have to stay in our captivity. Is that four and eight? So like yeah, I don't think it's four and eight. I think it's um uh, we are yet to stay in our captivity. It might be three, three and eight. Uh look up the roof, chapter three. Bible can show. You know, so hey, we not free like how we think we are, man. You know, we just cause we got these little liberties to go out. You know, to uh, buy and to sell and to do whatever, you know, that doesn't mean that we're free. You know, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are God's chosen people. You know, right. and it's hot time to wake out of sleep. I'm going to keep saying that. You want to bring that out? You got it. All right, bring it out. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and for a prayer, and to be subject to payment. Right, so it says we are yet this day in our captivity where the Lord has scattered us, man. You know, because we this is not this place is not our home, man. You know, and we belong. Hey, we belong in Jerusalem, man. We from the land of Israel. This place is not our homeland, you know. Let me get the book of um. It was more on that. All right, bring it up. Do you believe in the Bible? You believe in the Bible? Come talk to me real quick. Sis, do you believe in the Bible, sis? Oh yeah. Bring it up. According to all the iniquities of our fathers, which the from the Lord our God. Right, according to the iniquities of our fathers, man. You know, hey, like I was saying, you know, this place, this place is not our homeland. You know, we were sent here to serve a basically, basically a prison sentence, man. 
You know, we still prisoners here. That's why that's why Isaiah was saying he, he came to uh the Lord anointed him to proclaim liberty unto the captives, man. You know, because we captives, and another word for captive, another word for captive is to be prisoner, you know. And that's what we are, you know. We don't realize it, but you know, that's what we are. We still under the we still under the um under the captivity of our oppressor, which is the so-called white man, you know, and all these other nations, because the Lord said, you know, that they would get up above us very high, man. You know, right now we're standing outside of a liquor store owned by Arabs. You know, they, they, they got up above us very high. Now, they, now we the ones got to come to them to buy us, to uh, to buy whatever they got to offer for us, you know. Right. The whole time, they supposed to be coming to us, man. Right. You know, we the righteous rulers of this world. You know, we, do, we supposed to be the ones that's ruling the earth right now. You know, but we fell off, you know, according to the iniquity of our fathers. Read that last part again. According to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. Right, so hey, it says our fathers departed from the Lord our God, man. You know, how did you depart from the Lord our God? Because you broke the commandments, man. You know, you, you started breaking the commandments, you wanted to go off and worship other gods. You know, hey, the so called Hispanics, the so called Hispanics, they got so many gods that they worship, they don't even know what they're doing, man. You know, in this in the, in the damn uh, Catholic Church and all that, with this Catholicism, man, let me get uh, the book of Le Leviticus 26 from the top. You know, hey, they don't even know what they're doing, man. They got all these different gods. And they talk about uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and all of that. You know, they do the little, you know, when I'm talking about talking about, they do the little thing like that when they try to anoint you and all that. They don't know what they're doing, man. They don't know what's going on, man. You know, and then they then they worship the damn Virgin Mary. And the Lord ain't never say worship Virgin Mary. Right. Hey, brother, come talk to me, brother. I got a question for you. I like it. Go ahead. Go ahead on that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 1. He shall make no idols nor graven images. Image, neither rear you up a standing image. So the Lord said, We shall make we shall make no idols nor graven nor graven images, man. Hey, I, if I drive through the hill right now, we got this section in our uh, in our city called the hill. If I drive through there right now, you no, know, I, I I know automatically I'ma see a Virgin Mary sitting in somebody's yard, man. I'ma see, I'ma see a damn uh what's the name sitting in somebody's yard. The Lord said don't make no graven images, man. And then everybody grandma house, whether you're a black, Hispanic, or Native American, she got that white Jesus up there on the wall, you know, or she got or she got some kind of angel up there. You know, the Lord said don't don't make these graven images, don't bow down to them. You know, the Lord said don't deal with that, you know. So we gotta we gotta repent from our wicked ways, man. You know, so let me get uh because a lot of y'all, y'all like to worship Virgin Mary. It doesn't say worship Virgin Mary. Let me get Luke 11 and 27. Have a good shot. It say don't worship Virgin Mary. You know, the Lord said worship him, not Virgin Mary. The Lord said keep the commandments. Not worship all of these false idols. You know, not fall into uh, idolatry and all of that. The Lord ain't dealing with that, and that's a quick way to get cut down in Babylon the Great, man. You know, so bring that up. It's the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 27. 27. And it sh and it came to pass that came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman that accompanied company looked up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bears thee. She said, Bless what? Blessed is the womb that bear thee and the patch which thou hast sucked. Right, so she tried she tried to come and say, you know, blessed is the womb that bear thee and the patch which thou hast sucked. You know, she was talking about she talked about blessed be of Virgin Mary. You know, she was talking about the Virgin Mary. She talked about bless her because she she gonna be a, a virgin forever and all that. All of these all these false philosophies and ideologies that the so-called Catholic Church you know brought about, which has nothing to do with the Bible. First of all, you know, all of these false ideologies and philosophies that they came about with, you know, hey, these is nothing but false doctrines, man, and snares unto our people to, to to keep them in sin, man. You know, that's all it is. You know, and once we start picking up this Bible and actually reading what it says, and hey, brother, you got a minute for the word of the Lord, brother? Let me ask you a question, brother. Let me ask you a question, brother. Would you be a so-called African American? Would you be an African American? Yeah. Right. So, how did our people get to America? Ships and boats, right? They brought us over here to slavery on ships, right? Did you know that was in the Bible? We're finna show you real quick. We're finna show you. It was toxic in the Bible. And we had to go through things like this. Go ahead, bring that out. Deuteronomy 28. Start at 15 first. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. 
And it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, who observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Lord said, if we don't listen to his commandments and keep them, then all these curses go come upon. He's speaking to the Israelites. He said, all these curses go come upon them and overtake them. Right? So same way, same way if you got kids and they don't do what you want. You know, you tell them to wash the dishes before you get home. If they don't wash the dishes, you go, you go punish them when you get home, right? You go discipline them. Right. Because they didn't listen. They didn't obey your word, right? Right. So the Lord told the Israelites that they don't obey his word. He's going to put curses on them. Basically punish them, right? So we're going to get that curse that said that they will go into slavery. Let's get verse 68 for the brother. And how did you say we got to America? On boats, right? Maybe on boats. Let's see what happened to the Israelites, the people in the back. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, with ships. So the first time the Israelites was in Egypt, they was enslaved under the Egyptians, 430 years. So he basically saying, I'm gonna send y'all back into what? Slavery again, right? He said, I'm gonna send y'all into slavery again, but this time what, what? With ship on the plane, with ship on the train, with ship in the car, with ship. So he said they was gonna go into slavery on ships, brother. Who else, who else in the world can say that they've been into slavery on ships besides us? That's a prophecy that, that came that came true when we got brought over here to America. Under the so-called white man, you know? And uh, what it get it get more in-depth than that. Go ahead, bring it up. By the way of I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. There ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So it said after we get off those ships, we're gonna get sold to our enemies. What happened after we got off those boats, brother? We got sold to our enemies, right? So it seemed right. like it seemed like the things that's in this Bible came to happen to the to uh, to us, you know. But the Lord was speaking to the Israelites. So if we match up with the curses in this Bible, what would that make us? Would that make us African Americans? Would that make us Black people? Or would that make us the Israelites? We'd be the Israelites, right? That's right. Right. So it seemed like let, let's get another curse for the brother. Um, give me um verse thirty-two. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long. So it says, Our sons and our daughters shall be given to another people. You can see that back then, and you can see that even today now. You know, back then, with what? Master come kicking in your door, say, I'm sending your daughter down the road. You know, to them right there. That happened to those people, right? Right. And then what? You see it today. Uh, uh, the so called white man or white woman, they come kicking in your door. Protective services, PCFS, and all that, you know. They talk about, hey, we're gonna take your kids, you know, because you ain't been you ain't been complying with the court, or you've been failing your drug test, or you've been doing all this and doing all that. We got complaints, you know. And your little daughter been showing up, we don't know how she got this boom, she fell off the slide or whatever. But they kind of say that you beat on her or something like that. You know, they try to make up a story and stuff like that to just take your kids away, to destroy the black family structure, you know. Right, put us back, right, put us in the system, right. And that's that's all a part that's all a part of the Israelite downfall. You know, this is part of the curses that's in that's in the Bible that the Lord put on us for not obeying his commandments. Let's get another one. Let me get verse 54. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil for his brother. So a brother that you will usually be cool with. You know how I greeted you when you walked out the store and all that. Oh, what's up, brother? Come talk to me and all that. So a brother that you will usually be cool with, they say this brother have a have an evil eye towards you. What does that sound like? That sound like, you know, how brothers be gang banging. You know, just because a brother from one side of the town, you got beef on him because you got beef on him because he's from that side. Right, anytime you see a brother that you don't know, you kind of looking at him crazy like, like, who is this nigga? You know, where he coming from? Why he got those shoes on? I should have taken from him. You know, I, we start thinking like that towards our own people. The Lord said that's a curse. And it's going to get more in depth with that. You know, keep going. I shall be evil toward his brother right. and toward the wife of his bosom. Hey, so brothers beating their own wives, brothers beating their wives at the crib and all that. You know, brothers, brother, you see brothers on Juliet Patch all day, you know, in the, in the damn little police body, you know, with domestic violence. It be domestic after domestic, and it all be our people. They all be so called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you know, who we know as the Israelites today. Keep going on that, it's more, it's more. Toward, toward the wife of his bosom toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave. Yeah, it said this man, this Israelite man is even gonna be known for even his children. And who most known for leaving his children? Like, you know, leaving the baby mama by herself to take care of the kids and be like, you know, I'll just go start a, I'll just go start a new family. Fuck it, because me and her argue too much. Yeah, that, that's, how, that's, that's our people, right? 
We're the ones that go through that. I ain't going with my father in the house. This brother, he didn't go through that. I mean, he didn't grow up with his father in the house. I don't know about you, brother, but hey, a lot of our people, we don't have our father in the house. The Lord said that's part of the curses. You know, that's, that, he put that on the Israelites. So wouldn't that, wouldn't that coincide with us? Wouldn't that make us the Israelites since we speak these curses? Let me get the one where it say the uh, sign and the wonder. What is that, 40, 40, uh, 44, 46? Bring that up. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So the Lord said these curses is going to be upon us for a sign and for a wonder and upon our seed forever. So they curses, they was on us back then and they still on us today. And it says for a sign and for a wonder. Just like you see that sign right there, it says digital talk and beep. So you know that's a beeping store. You know that's an electronic store or whatever. You know, the Lord said these curses are going to be upon us for a sign. So we see these curses upon us. That's a sign that we the Israelites. That's a sign that we were the people that he was talking to back then. Right. You know, that he was having Moses, you know, give the commandments to and uh, and put these curses on, you know, because we didn't follow the commandments, you know. Right, so so a wise question right now, brother, you know, since we know that we the Israelites, since we know that we the people of this Bible, will be how will we get those curses up off of us? How can we start to uh, get back in good terms with the Most High? So that question, I mean, that to an the answer to that question would be to keep the commandments. No, do you know some commandments? Yeah, yeah, that's not steal, that's not. So you're basically saying the Ten Commandments, right? Did you know that it's more than Ten Commandments? Did you know that this was a commandment? Let me get, let me get Leviticus 11 and 7. Did you know that this was a commandment in the Bible? to give up the pork to serve the Lord than to keep eating it and indulge ourselves in sin. Right. Because we see in all the toxins that's in. You know, I just seen a video of some uh, some white lady, she was pouring she was pouring Pepsi on top of the pork. She had like two pork steaks or two pork chops or whatever. She was pouring Pepsi on top of it. And the more Pepsi she poured on there, all the worms, like worms, just slowly started coming out, like little tape worms. It was like little white. They started stringing out and all of that, you know. And, and yeah, pork, pork is unclean. The Lord said it was unclean. So, you know, we, we have to stop eating that. You know, so uh, let's let's get another one. Let me get uh, Leviticus 19 and 27. So these commandments that we never even heard before. You know, our pastor, we, you go to church, your pastor, he's not teaching me his commandments. No, you go somewhere else, they not teaching these commandments. Your granny, she probably don't know these commandments, even though she stay in the Bible all day. You know, she don't know these commandments, because our people, they, for some reason, they look over, they look over the first part of the Bible. You know, but when you read a book, you read any other book, you go read it from front to back, right? So why, when we pick up the Bible, we, read, we start from the back, and just read the back of it? The problem, we just want to read where Jesus came in. Right, you always go to what you want to go to, right? But we gotta we gotta eat the whole roll, as the Lord says in the Bible. You know, we gotta we gotta read the whole book because that's how we get the true understanding. That's why some of our, so so many of our people is led astray by these wicked ass pastors, you know. So uh let's get that Leviticus 19 and 28. So, so, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. It reads It reads 
he shall not grind the corners of your heads, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. So I can't just take a straight razor or whatever and go to my or go to my barber and just like, you know, hey, shave my whole shave my whole cap. You know, just shave my whole head. The Lord said, the Lord said, don't do that. You know, just say, yeah, shave my whole cap. You know, just go ahead and just, I don't want hair no more. The Lord said, we can't do that. We got to keep our hair. You know, you don't got to grow it out. But, you know, you can, you can get a fade. I just had a fade, but I wanted to grow my hair out of your braids. But, you know, you, you're more than welcome to do that. But the Lord said, you can't just shave your whole hair. You know how some people, they get mohawks. They kind of shave their whole side of their head. The Lord said, we can't do that. You know, we got to keep, we got to keep the whole, you know, around our head and all that. You can cut as low as you want to, but you just can't be bald. You know, but you could if you go on ball, then you ain't got no choice. If you go on ball, you ain't got no choice. That's that's just nature. Yeah. 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 A lot of our people when when you read back in the Bible and the stories, you know, it's saying a lot of our people they kept their hair. A lot of a lot of our people that is Nazarite, you have a Nazarite vibe. That's the vibe that you make with the Lord for whatever reason. Whatever vibe you want to make with the Lord, and you're not allowed to just cut your hair. You know, until until the time that your vow is over, then you gotta shave your hair. You know, but that's 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 our hair don't do that, you know, it defies gravity, we, we throw it up, we can put it in so many different styles and all that, you know. Hey, our hair, our hair is our identity, you know, it's a big part of, it's a big part of who we are as a people. So the Lord said we got to keep our hair, not only our hair, but our beard as well, keep going on that. Neither shall thou mar the corner of thy beard. Right, so it says neither shall we mar the corner of our beard. So if I just wanted to have like my little goatee right here, you know, I can't shave off this part. The Lord said we can't do that. You know, the Lord said we gotta we gotta keep our full beard. You know, you can line it up or whatever. But you know, whatever you can grow, grow it. Right. Or whatever you can grow, grow it. Don't don't kind of you know style it up or just have like a little trim strap and all that. The Lord said we gotta have our full beard. I do cut my full beard. It's all right, brother, because you ain't know. You ain't know. The Lord said at the time of our ignorance, He winks at. You know, but now since you know better, the Lord gonna come and hold you accountable for that. The Lord gonna be like, all right, brother. You know, the brothers out there, they told you that. You know, you're supposed to have your full beard, brother. You know, so now you gotta, you know, work on work on growing that beard out, brother. Cause what? How you tell a male lion from a female lion? A male lion from a female lion. The mane, right? Right. So hey, we gotta keep our mane, cause that's a manly stature about us. You know, it's a story in the Bible. Let me get um, yeah, Second Samuel. What is that? The nineteenth chapter? It's ten. It's the tenth chapter. Come. On. Hey, hey, David, he had, you heard of King David before? Well, David, he had sent two of his servants over to the Ammonites, you know, and they and they kind of, you know, grabbed them up, shaved off half of their beard. And they say they was ashamed after that. It was ashamed after they after they shaved half of their beard off because your beard is a manly statue. You know, your beard is something that you take pride in, you know? Right. So uh, bring that up so you got it. Bring it up. It's the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 5. And when they told it unto David, he sent to meet them because the men were great. What's that at? It's the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 3. And the princes and the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, the Lord, thinkest thou David doeth honor thy father? So he sent, he sent two of his servants to go over there and basically get us gifts. Get them get to give gifts to this other nation. But the people of the other nation, they was like, you think he really over here to get, to uh, make good titles, to be our friend and all that? And he sent them over here to spy on us, man. You know, because they know we had, we had a weak moment because our king just died. So so they was kind of like taking counsel to mum themselves. So they was like, we gonna grab our king's two servants and do what with them? The honor that he sent upwards into thee, had not David his father had sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it. Wherefore Hanan took David's servants and shaved off one half of their beards and cut off the garments in the middle, even to their buttock, and sent them away. So we shaved off half of their beard and they cut off they cut off their garment because we didn't wear garments all the way down to our feet. So they cut off the back of their garment up to their ass where their ass was exposed, you know. Basically, you know, sent them away like that. 
you know, so it was, it was, but the point of uh, what I wanted to get was that, you know, they had shaved, they had know to shave off half of our beard because we took pride in our beards, you know. Same, same way a lion takes pride in his mane. You know, hey, if a lion got a huge mane, he go, he go try to proclaim himself as that alpha male, you know. He go come try to mess with all the other males and be like, hey, I got the big mane around here, you know. Hey, hey, you can't deal with me, you know. That's, that's how our people live. We the same way, you know. So, um, let's get another commander. Let's get, um, uh, Exodus 20 and 8. I'm going to show you. So all these commandments, our people been breaking over time. And the Lord been sending us into captivity after captivity after captivity. And now we in this captivity. This will be our last captivity. Because the Lord, you ever heard that Jesus is coming back? You ever heard about that? No, they said that the Lord is coming back. And he's not coming back as a nice guy. No, he's not coming back. He's not coming back as uh, to give hugs and kisses and all that. Like how they say in the Christian church. They say he gonna come back and his garments gonna be drenched in blood. Cause all the people that he gonna put to death. We gonna get to that after this, after these uh, commandments. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Oh. Six days shall thou labor. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right, so it says six days shall we labor and do all our work. So what is the seventh day of the week? Sunday? Would it be Saturday? Right, Sunday is the first day of the week, you know. But you, you see, majority they majority people they go to church on Sunday, you know. But but that's because they don't they don't know that the true Sabbath is Saturday. It's from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. So the, really, the Sabbath just ended. As soon as the sun went down on Saturday night, it ended. You know, so on Friday night, that's the Sabbath. The Lord said we're not allowed to buy, sell, or uh, do our own pleasure. You know, we got to dedicate that day to the Lord. He said He gave us six days to do all that work to do everything that we need to do. But the seventh day, we got to consecrate that to him. Let me get Nehemiah 10 to 31. It's the book of Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. And if the people of the land beware of, or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day, that we would leave the seventh year in the exaction of every death. Right, so on the Sabbath day, we're not supposed to be buying or selling and doing our own pleasures. You know, that was the point of bringing that out. But um, like I said, you know, uh, Jesus, would, would you say that that's Jesus right there? No, nah, right? What did Jesus look like according to the Bible? What do you think they gave us that image? Right, right. That's the that's the that's the chief that's the chief expression of white supremacy right there. You know, they gave us that, so we look at them as, as God. You know, we look at them as the people of God. You know, can we see that Jesus is a white man? But Jesus is not a white man. You know, and we have forgive them for everything that they're going to our people. You know, we have forgive them for blowing our churches up. We have forgive them for hanging our people out out in the damn cornfields and all that, burning our men's on the cross and stuff like that, you know, doing all kinds of things. We're forgiven for that because we think Jesus is a white man and we think that the white people is, is the people of God, but they're not, you know? Hey, hey, the so-called Negroes, we just read that we're the people of God. Right. You know, we just read that we God's chosen people because we're the ones that fit the curses. You know, the so-called white man, he don't fit none of them curses. You know, he don't fit not one of them. He never went to slavery on ships and he brought us into slavery on ships and the Lord got a recompense on him for that. And let me get the book of, um, what is that? Let me get Exodus 21 and 16. This is what the Lord said. This is what the Lord got in store for the so-called white man. It's written in the law. All right, brother, you're an Israelite, big. The book of Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. And he that stilleth a man and selleth them, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Right, so it says, he that stealeth from man that sell him. Then we get stolen from our home, man. We're not our own. What is that? Stolen and sold. And we still in the hands of the people that stolen and sold us. We still in this country where they brought us to. Hey, the Lord said, what? What should happen to them? He shall surely be 
you can't keep that. Right. So like I said, you know, when Christ comes back, and he coming back with his garments drenched in blood. No, because he coming back, he coming back to take over this world. He coming back to restore the, to give the, to bring the justice to the people that uh, that been doing that been getting did wrong. You know, right. he coming back to do that. He coming back to restore to restore us to restore us back on that pedestal that we belong on. Because we was we was the kings and queens on the earth. You know, we was the kings and, and, and the princesses and the righteous priests on the earth. You know, let me get uh, what is that? First Peter two and nine. Let me get the book of First Peter two and nine. I'm gonna get a couple more for you, brother. And then I'm gonna, uh, I'm trying to keep you too long, I don't know if you have something to do over there. Right. First Peter 2 and 9. Let me get the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should shoot forth the praises of them who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Right, so the Lord said we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You know, we royalty on the earth. But, they, but what, 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 what kind of heritage do they give us? What kind of, what kind of um, stereotypes do they try to make us fit? All the BET movies, we gangsters and drug dealers, killers, you know. Right, right, the normal. Right, right, we, we, everything, we everything that's bad. But the Lord just said we supposed to be everything that's good. We supposed, we supposed to be a nation of kings and priests. You know, we a royal priesthood. We the chosen people. No, we the ones. We the ones that uh, you know. You you notice that you know we the salt to the earth, like Yahweh Shai said. You know we that's and that's how you say Jesus' name in Hebrew. It's Yahweh Shai. Oh yeah. Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. And the Most High God, His name is Yahweh. Yahweh means He exists. Then Yahweh Shai means He delivers. Cause Jesus, He is our deliverer. He's He's the one that's gonna come and get us up out of this captivity that we're in right now. You know, so that's why his name is He Delivers. He came to save his people and his people only, you know. And all the other nations, they're going into slavery when he comes back. Right. When we get put on our pedestal, when we get put back into our holy into our holy land, you know, all the other nations, we're going to take them for captives and uh, in service to handmaids. You know, so um, you got any questions about the Bible, brother? Anything you'll, you'll like us to clear up? Uh -huh. So if I was to ask you, brother, what's your nationality? We'll be telling you. That's right. That's right. So we're going to give you a flyer, brother. Because we got a YouTube channel and all that, brother. You got to check us out, brother. That's right. The brother said he is like, you know, that's the, that's the 12 child's chart. And then, you know, we got this image of, you know, uh, Caesar Borgia to show you that that's not Jesus, you know? All right. So, brother, check that out, brother. All right, brother. Be smooth. So all praise to the Most High. You know our people. We out here waking up to our true nationality, man. You know we are the Israelites, man. So uh, right. Let me get that in the book of uh. Let me get that in the book of uh, Baruch two and thirty. Bible You know, hey, cause this is a prophecy that's coming to pass, man. You know, this is a prophecy that's coming to pass, and it's many more prophecies that's gonna come to pass. You got World War Three. You know, you got you got. Hey, brother, you believe in the Bible, brother? With the hat on. Bring that up. The book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. Right. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Right, so it says, in the land of our captivity, we shall remember ourselves, man. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're remembering ourselves. We're coming back to the to rehearse the righteous acts. Let me get Judges 5 and 11. We're coming back to rehearse the righteous acts now, man. You know, because right. that's what we're doing. That's how we remember ourselves. You know, hey, the Lord said we was going to be discontinued from our heritage, but what? You know, the Lord, the Lord allowed us to uh, to come back to our heritage now, and now we're rehearsing the righteous acts of our heritage. Brother just celebrated the new moon last night, which brought in the new year. You know, the month of a bib. You know, so we celebrating that right now. And then, and uh, what is that? In uh, in 14 days, we're going to be holding the Passover, man. You know, celebrating the deaths of all the uh, Egyptian babies that the Lord put to death, man. And we're going to be celebrating that, man. Right. And soon we're going to have a new Passover when the Lord redeems us from this from this captivity, man. And we're going to be celebrating the deaths of all the white babies, man. You know, after we dash that baby's against the stones like the Lord said we was going to do, man. Right. 